Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Frame Your Best Shot, where we are taking you to the UK. We are privileged to hear from the amazing commercial photographer, Damien Lovegrove, out of the UK. Damien, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Tell us where we're at. We're in your studio, right? Yeah, we're in the studio. We're actually in the viewing room. So the screen that's behind me over this shoulder, yeah. um, that's the screen that my clients will see their pictures on. Um, we have some nice music, some screen. The curtains close automatically on a little button. Um, <laughs> the lights go down and the light and everything happens. And uh, I, I tend to shoot, uh, although you introduced me as a commercial photographer, um, I tend to, my background really is, is being um, with producing portraits and uh, wedding photography. So wow. there's been a lot more of my life I've been, I've been working for uh, the social uh, clients. Right, um, okay. Previously, I was at the BBC. Where did you start? Where did this passion of photography come from? Well, it all, it all came from my mum, really. Um, she's an art teacher, and oh. uh, she was uh, very influential in me early on to be able to, to look and to see, to sketch, and to be able to draw, and to be able to paint, and to be able to sort of relate the three three dimensional world around us into a two dimensional page, right. uh, and that, that that skill is something I can sort of put back to her. Um, but very early on, when I left college, um, I managed to get myself a job at the BBC as a cameraman, and uh, I went to Bristol and I started working as a training cameraman, and I was on an apprenticeship at that point. So it took right. me three years before I could operate a camera on some of the top shows, and even then that was sort of quite low down the the pecking order, shall we say. Right. Um, a few years later, having got a lot of experience uh, shooting in different places around the world, but shooting uh, television shows, uh, music shows, uh, pop music and uh, reality TV, uh, although it wasn't really big in, in the 1980s, but uh, certainly <laughs> some soap operas and things we shot. Um, right. Having got that experience, I really wanted to get into lighting, and uh, I begged to my, my line manager to let me do a lighting training workshop uh, course. It was three months intensive training with, um, at the time, what seemed like a very uncool sort of guy. I mean, he was must have been in his early 60s, and uh, I was in my sort of mid-20s and feeling sort of cocky and confident. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he was such a great guy. I mean, he made his life uh, shooting black and white movies in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the information that he imparted with me uh, gave me uh, has been invaluable ever since I, I've been such a lucky person to have that sort of historical quality come through into my work so when is when is the photo shoot where you picked up the camera and you know all this studying of lighting and studying of film and being involved with so many different things when did you say this is what I want to do well, it, it's difficult to put a pinpoint in. I think when, in 1984, when I joined the BBC, I mean, that's going back a long time. Uh, it's probably a long time before you were born. But I joined uh, no. 1984, and uh, I, at that time, I was a keen phot amateur photographer, mm -hmm. and I took my portfolio with me to the interview, and I discussed the pictures, and they were very impressed, and so they sort of gave me the job, which is great. But um, right the way through from there, I started shooting uh, stock library pictures. So I, I shoot for a library in London called the Science Photo Library. And from that point on, I have earned an income from photography. So I, I could say I've sort of been professional uh, as a still photographer all the time throughout my BBC career. But um, I think when I started shooting single camera at the BBC, so we were doing... Um, documentaries and I was working with one one producer one I was a cameraman I had a sound recordist and we were working with one presenter I realized that making someone look gorgeous using light and, and, and camera work was my big thing and this is what I wanted to do so um, it was quite straightforward to, to carry that through into weddings and portraits and right. uh, I had a crack at weddings as everyone does and uh, I photographed a few um, presenters and a few actors' weddings, and didn't do a particularly good job because I sort of tried to do what everyone else did. And then oh. I realised actually the market's different. What we've got in the UK, and, and at the time, uh, I suppose we're talking about the late 1990s um, right. when I became a wedding photographer. Um, I just looked around me, and everybody was doing weddings by numbers. There was some a very formulaic way of working. I mean, we were all shooting on film, of course, at the time. Right. And uh, I decided to shoot everything differently. 
So what I was going to do was to limit myself. And this is really quite important. I think if you're trying to find a style, you mm. want to try and control what you do. And so I shot everything for 10 years at F4. Okay, every wedding picture was at F4. Wow. I didn't include any sky in any of my pictures. Okay? Why, why did you choose that? Why, why F4? Well, it's quite, I stole that idea, okay, from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> because if you look at something like CSI Miami or NCIS sure. or uh, Desperate Housewives, all these shows, they're all shot on the same aperture, every wow. single frame. And that's why over a period of two weeks when they're shooting an episode of a, of a program like, uh, like that, there is that continuity of style. The background always has the same out-of-focus feel, the same bokeh. Uh, Damien, you just, you just kind of blew my mind because no one has ever... I've asked that question quite a bit of how do you find your style? And it's, you know, you've got to find you, you've got to look through a magazine, you've got to find you. But no one has ever said, shoot consistently with, a, with one f-stop. That is fantastic advice. That is a very different way of looking at it. I love that. Thank you. I think the important thing really is not just with one f-stop, it's actually having that continuity of style. So when you look at these programs, you'll see there's a wide, wide shot establishing where you are. And then they go into the close-ups and the, and the interviews and the, and the little two-way discussions uh, and the action. And it's the, when I shot weddings, we used to have a page turn in the album and then you'd have a wide shot saying, okay, we're in the bride's bedroom. And then it allows all the little close-ups of, uh, of the shoes and the hair and the tiaras and the flowers and right. things. And then you turn the page, okay, we're in the pub with the guys, okay? And then you start with a few close-ups of the guys having drinks and things like that. So each page turn in our wedding album was like a new chapter. Wow. So it could be like uh, um, one minute you're at the, uh, the the police HQ, the next minute you're at the crime scene, the next minute you're at the the, um, the sort of the, an, another area, another scene. And the way these TV shows are intercut, you, you're running two or three sub stories all at the same time, which all come together. Right. Twenty four, of course, is was brilliant at doing that. Absolutely. And I try to do that with my wedding albums as well. So I just bring in all those. Hollywood sort of style in um, structures for telling a story um, and making it visually exciting. I bring that into my stills. What a fantastic comparison. Here, here you started in television and you've incorporated all that experience into your photography. That is fantastic, Damien. Thank you for sharing that. Talk, talk to me about some of the projects that you've been working on lately. You, you know, I, I saw on your website that you've got a fantastic book that was a personal project. Do you, do you actually have it there that you could show us? I do. Let me have a little look. Here is a copy. Um, this is the book I've been working on. It's a book uh, called Chloe Jasmine Wichelow. And now Chloe is a fantastic model. Um, she's a girl I've met in, in the UK. Um, and uh, she's occasionally um, been over in, in, in the US um, doing, doing modeling. And uh, I met her last year. And this book was shot over wow. a period of four and a half months. Okay, it's 300 pages, it's hardback, wow. and it's a beautifully bound and made book, which it's we had so, um, sourced in the US. Um, and it's uh, a little project which I wanted to put together, like my first sort of art book. It's beautiful, and I've seen the photos, they are amazing. So what was, what was your, why did you do that project? Was it, I want to show that I can do something with continuous lighting, I want to show just how beautiful Chloe is, why, why did you choose to do this project? Um, it, 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 the journey of the book came part of the way through, but I must have been about shoot three or shoot four. I realized that Chloe and I, we had this chemistry, this energy, um, this, this drive to produce beautiful images, mm -hmm. but also a connection. And being able to connect with people is really the way I like to work. I, I need to be able to see into their soul. I need to be able to um, have some harmony with them because I believe that when someone's looking back at you, as you look at a photograph, you, what you're looking at actually is a mirror on the photographer. I think the photographer is there in the face that wow. looks back at you. And so, in a way, you've got to have that sort of harmony. And, and you know what? It just clicked. It just felt right. And so, after about the, the fourth or fifth shoot, I said to Chloe, I said, look, we've just got to produce a book. We, let's make it happen. Let's do it. And from there on, we came up with all these wacky ideas and we were shooting in 
fields with, of corn <laughs> they were shooting in, um, back streets of Manchester, um, old glazed pubs. We would be, and we ended up wow. doing a, a nude shoot. Now I'd never shot a, a nude before, uh, and Chloe had never <laughs> shot nude, and and it was all quite embarrassing, but it was all quite good at the same time. It was just like liberating. Anyway, so the pictures from that shoot they're in the book. It was well, all so. quite embarrassing. I love that. Well, I I have seen some of the images. They are most definitely beautiful. If people here in the U.S. or at our international fan base, for that matter, is it on Amazon? Is it someplace where they can um, go it, online? It is on Amazon, um, but it's um, we, the publisher is called Floppy Chicken. Okay. Um, okay, Floppy, Floppy Chicken. Chicken. But if you but go onto my website, Lovegrove um, Lovegrove Consulting, you'll you'll see it there. So okay. you can have a look at it there. Fantastic. And um, I'm going to try and get uh, get them over to um, B and H in New York and, and, and companies like that. So they they've approached me, and, and we're going to try and uh, some come up with some. Um, way of getting getting the books available out, out into the US. Fabulous. Cool. Well, if you're just feeling kind and you want to send me one, I have no problem. I will do. And I, I <laughs> the last few um, that have been signed by both Chloe and myself, so wow. from the initial launch, we kept a few back. I'll send you one of those. Guys. Oh, Damien. Love it. I love that. You're a good That's man. A <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, let's let's talk. We've actually got a few viewers that have written in. They knew that we were going to do an interview with you, and we've got a few questions here. Do you mind if we we ask no, away go here? Ahead. Please do. Okay. This first one, Brandon Kasem. He says, "Damien's work is amazing. I especially love his glamour, which, whether we call it glamour or not, he said, I'd love to know his tricks on how he makes his models comfortable." Okay, now I think what you mean, obviously the word glamour is it's a certain style of photograph which is perhaps sure. quite sexy, but I think what, what, what your reader, um, uh, viewer thinks is that when someone, uh, when one of my models has got sort of less clothes on, um, there's an element of sort of vulnerability and it, sometimes it comes through in the photographs, especially if they're, you know, not, not got a lot of experience of shooting that way. And right. it's really important point this actually that, that, that's raised and, and it's something that I like to... First of all, we have to make a shoot fun, okay? And it's a creative journey that involves both the model and the photographer together, plus the makeup artist as well, probably. So um, it depends on whether I have one with me. Occasionally, I, we, we just go out on the street and just shoot, uh, and, and I just sometimes I, I don't have a makeup artist. But um, for certainly for sort of lingerie-type shots, then I think it's, it's a great thing to have because when you have someone who can be with the model while you're doing the technical stuff. It helps you because you don't have to engage all the time. But when it comes to taking pictures, I like to share the back of my camera with a person I'm photographing after really? three or four frames. And I think that way I can describe how I want them to be, uh, their posture, their shoulders, how they want them to relax or uh, make any adjustments to lighting. And I can get their feedback too. They might say, oh, I really don't like my nose from that angle, but actually I like this <laughs> Now, shot. Damien, and this is know, this is interesting it's really though. important to listen to your, 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 your people you're photographing. Absolutely. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you brought up That's an right, interesting please. point. You started with film. So how did you do it yeah. when you shot film? Oh, of course, it's an interesting thing. I didn't, that's the first thing. Um, I shot film and, and I started, I was shooting film from the 1980s right through to um, 2001, I went digital. So two, year 2000 was my last year of shooting film on, on medium format and 35mm. Right. Uh, and uh, at that, uh, that era in my life, I was doing some commercial stills for Peugeot, Motorola, Parker Pens, um, but most of my work uh, at that point was uh, just starting to come into weddings, uh, weddings and portraits. And I'd, ne you know, I'd never photographed anyone without a full full clothing on before at that point um, although of course I've worked with people working at the BBC as a cameraman and working one-to-one -one with presenters I've worked with them and I've given them feedback of how to how they can change their presentation method how can they can relax and so I've got this I'm quite comfortable at, at, at getting someone's confidence very early on and how do you and do I that? Think that that really helps and if you're nervous then the chances are the person in front of the camera is going to be nervous too. So there's the, the person you photograph um, is in a way their expression is a mirror on you as a photographer. So wow. uh, I can look at a portrait of a child or uh, an adult that has eye contact and I can see the frame of mind of the photographer in that, in that child or in that adult. Wow, that is fantastic advice. Um, this one is a question from Albert Boban or Bobin? I'm so sorry, okay. Albert. <laughs> um, 
I have been a fan of his work for a year. I wor he says, I wish he has a workshop in Singapore. So this is probably a good time to talk about your workshops. Where are you going to be? Where are you coming? Well, in, in a good question. Uh, I've been doing some workshops. I retired from wedding photography. I think retired. I mean, I'm only, well, am I 47 or so? But um, <laughs> I've done 10 years at shooting weddings. And uh, I think, you know, I, I needed my time for my family at weekends. Sure. Um, and so that was the, one of the first elements to, 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 to stop shooting weddings. Um, and I'd shot three or 400 weddings. And, and I, you know, I feel like I've wow. done, done, my, done my bit. So three or yes. four Quite you have, good going. You I don't feel like I need to prove anymore. You know? <laughs> um, so, uh, really, the, the point is that, that, that you know, I, I had to transfer some of my income, or well, 100% of my income was from weddings, and now, then I had to sort of do something else. And so, I decided to actually spend my time giving back my knowledge and experience and, and giving that to the, to the photographic community, um, but obviously to earn money at the same time. It's just part of, part sure. of the trade. So, you got to eat. Um, and so I produced some <laughs> DVDs, and they were very successful. I wrote a book called um, The Complete Guide to Professional Wedding Photography, which uh, is published by El Sevier in the uh, Focal Press in the United States. Wow. Um, and uh, we've sold 30,000 copies or something. It's been really fantastic. That's, I mean, that's it? That's and, it. and that really sprung off. You know, people who bought the book, they wanted to come on workshops. And so wow. I went off to Australia, and I did Sydney and Perth and Melbourne, Brisbane. Um, and I've been to Singapore and I've been to Malaysia, but I, I, and I intend to go back to do workshops in Singapore. But uh, in the, over the next month, the next sort of six weeks, I've got, um, I'm in Berlin in a couple of weeks' time, and then I go to Spain, and I'm in Spain, and then I'm into Italy. Um, and then perhaps next May, I think I'm going to be coming over to Chicago and I'm going to start working in the United States and then looking at uh, the far the far east or sort of Southeast Asia, so Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia. So I will be there, partly because you speak English. <laughs> so when are you going to sleep? That's the question. Well, good question. You see, you know, both my wife and I, we both love travel. And uh, I like my little trips in Europe. You know, I, I fly out on a Monday, uh, have uh, arrive an hour later. You know, a, a trip from me to Berlin, from here to Berlin, is probably just like you to a neighboring city in the right. United States. So. Right. Um, and uh, then I have the afternoon wrecking, uh, having to look around to see where I'm going to shoot the next day. And then I've got two or three days of shooting workshops. Um, a few parties in the evening, of course, um, dinners and friend with friends, <laughs> and then I fly back. And so I'm at home every weekend, and, and that's really quite how I like to do it. That's fabulous. So you know, a trip out to Asia will probably take about three weeks, and so that takes a little bit more planning. And I, and I, I try to keep that, you know, those sort of longer trips down to sort of maybe one or two a year. Um, and then, you know, uh, Julie, my wife, and Francesca, my daughter, will come out and join me, perhaps, if we get the timing right. Um, and they can spend a couple of weeks on the beach while I'm out there shooting and having fun taking pictures. That's a rough gig, man. That's a it's rough tough. gig. Sorry. <laughs> you need someone to hold your bags. <laughs> I'm here for you. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this is actually from Big Ben. He, he hosts our Monday show. He says, will you please ask him how many lights does he typically use during a shoot for indoor or outdoor? Now, that's a, that's a broad question, but just kind of give us... For example, give us an example. Yeah, okay, example. okay. So um, it depends on, 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 the, on the shoot, of course. I mean, it, it's, I, I use every number of lights from one from zero to seven. Um, but the picture behind me on the wall up here, sure. um, that's lit with one window. Um, that's window light coming down onto Chloe. That's the picture. That's one of the pictures in the book. Um, and me, yeah, I'm being lit with a backlight um, and a key light. So I have two lights on me, plus there's a sure. light on the, on the picture behind me. So that I'm in a three-light environment at the moment. Um, but typically, when I'm out shooting on the street or in, in uh, a natural lit environment, uh, daylight, perhaps in a hotel bedroom or something, I will like, uh, you know, I like to find good natural light. And if I can find good natural light without having to add any extra light, then I will use that, absolutely. I like to keep things simple. The simpler, the better. Um, however, and this is a big however, if I want to add some drama or some and the dynamics to the picture, and I want to take it away from being natural and, and give it some sort of a, a stylized, lit look, then you know I, I can either add one, one spotlight or uh, one Hollywood-type style light or a speed light, um, right up to sort of four or five lights, depending on the, on, the, on the style. So there isn't really one straight answer. But keep it simple is the best, best solution, I think. Keep it simple. Got that, Big Ben? Keep it simple. Cool. Last question for you. 
Janae Rasmussen says, I notice you have a consulting business as well. What is your number one mistake you see photog photographers making with their business? Okay, I think uh, it's a difficult situation we have at the moment, the economic, situation, economic climate. But mm -hmm. um, it's important to understand that as photographers, um, we tend to be more... Uh, we consider ourselves photographers, but we need to spend more time working on the business, and we need to be better business people right. than we are perhaps photographers. And that's, uh, that scares a lot of photographers, the business side of it. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if you shoot 30 weddings a year, um, it's less, less than one day in 10 that you're actually taking pictures. Right. Um, and the rest of the time, you're getting marketing, you're building products. But the key thing is to remember that business, irrespective of uh, what style or type of business it is, has, it's like a, a three-legged table. Okay, or a tripod, okay. okay? And one of those legs is a product. You need to have a product that people want to buy. That's absolutely fundamental. Um, the second leg is marketing. Once you've got that product, you need to put it in front of enough people who'd want to buy it to generate the leads you need to, 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 to have a business. Sure. And then, of course, sales are part of that marketing and sales process. And then the final leg is um, your... Uh, financial, financial sort of structure to the business because right. it's all very well having a product and having people who want to buy it but if you've got to make it and you've got to fund it and you've got to live and you've got to pay your mortgage you need that cash flow and it's cash flow it's often the the most common problem that businesses have you know, right. they might, be, they might have a fantastic photographer with beautiful albums may have 30 weddings next year in the diary but maybe penniless now right you know, these are the situations we have to deal with as photographers you know entering the winter season here in the uk um and maybe not having you know might have three or four weddings between now and next may and and, and it's that cash flow which is the thing so look after the cash flow so damien Plan maybe ahead. are you I mean, kind of saying these three legs, if you don't have one of them balanced, you're going to exactly fall over. Right. And it, that's the point. Your tripod, if you have one leg, if you've got a very good product, but you've got no money to, to fund the marketing, or you, you're not going out, the, or you have, a, might have a fantastic wedding album, and it might be sat on your table at home looking fantastic. But if no one's seen it, you know, you know, you've got to ask yourself, how many brides every day are looking at that wedding album? Right. Uh, how many brides are going to see that album and say, I'd like that photographer to shoot my wedding? Right. And if it's sat at home, it's not doing anything. So, you know, the, you've got to keep your stool in balance, your table, your tripod or whatever it is, you've got a three-legged device, you've got to keep it in balance. And, uh, and I think you just the trick to growth, I think, is to look at the weakest element of your business and work on that. Work on it to such a point that it becomes the strongest element. And then find the new weakest and work on that and spiral around. And before you know where you are, you'll have a fantastic product and a great client base and people keep coming back for more and I think that's that's really important awesome so Damien thank you thank you so much that is amazing information and here we got like two percent of probably what is in your wise <laughs> library of wisdom so thank you so much that's a pleasure that's a pleasure <laughs> so let's get down to business okay let's talk about this week's photo contest which the category was simplicity and we sent over the finalists to you, and you've had a few hours to look those over. Yep. What are your thoughts for the top three? First of all, what are your thoughts for the top, the top finalists? I mean, are they all? Well, it's an, it was an interesting panel of pictures, actually. Right. Um, the title, Simplicity, uh, I wasn't quite, you know, I saw the title, I, I was thinking, okay, what are the pictures going to be like? And uh, I wasn't expecting to see um, a majority of pictures in, involving people which is quite pleasant for me because I'm a portrait wedding photographer. So sure. I think 24 out of the 36 pictures actually had people in them, right. uh, which is quite interesting. So um, but, and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, the, the, it's really difficult, um, and it's certainly very subjective um, when yes. we're going through a set of pictures like this. And, and I'm pretty sure that if I looked at the pictures tomorrow morning, I would perhaps choose a different winner or maybe a, 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 a different second place uh, picture because I think Certainly, with quite a lot of these images, it's all about the mood that you're in and the way you feel about a picture. Ah, so but, are you in a good mood? Oh, I'm in a fantastic mood. Okay. So okay. everyone's a winner. No, no. <laughs> no, I am in a fantastic mood. I tell you, the, the thing is that um, also, as a photographer, you feel very, I feel very personal about the subjects that I'm looking at. So, hmm. for instance, a portrait, I want to relate to that. I want to think, you know, is that a picture that I would love to put my name to? Right. Um, for the landscapes and the still life pictures, I'm often thinking, 
you know, would I put that on my wall? Is it something I can live with as an image? Is there, has it got a depth that will keep me looking at it after month two? Wow. Um, there's a lot of subjectivity to a picture, I think, which is far overlooked often when, when pictures are being judged. You know, I, there's no scoring system that I'm going to use for different elements of the picture. Um, I'm going to go with the heart, okay? So I'm going to judge from the heart, and that's okay. the way my clients have always judged, okay? They, their picture comes up and they say, don't like it, love it. Don't like it. They'll look at each of these pictures in turn, and they will just judge the picture. You know? and they, it's and, not, and it's not composition it's to them. It's not technicalities. It's emotion to them, right? It's okay. emotion. What does that picture okay. say to you? And so quite often when I look at a set of pictures, and I did that with these pictures, I, gave, I put them in a, into a little slideshow, um, and I gave them three seconds on each picture before it cut uh -huh. to the next picture. So I have what I call the three-second rule. Okay. And on those three seconds, I press the keyboard you know, one to keep, two to, to, to lose. And I, if a picture doesn't grab me in three seconds, it's gone. Love so I'm it. Very ruthless. I love but it. ones that did grab me, and I got down to about sort of 12 or so, which I felt had something which really sort of, you know, I could think about and look at. I spent plenty of time looking at those pictures, analyzing, thinking, and what is it I like about the picture? Um, what was the photographer thinking when they took the picture? Um, is how relevant was the picture mm -hmm. to the uh, the subject simplicity? Um, and to be quite honest, a lot of the best pictures in the set um, really it's hard to tie to simplicity. I mean, they're just great pictures. In fact, right. you could have, you could you have given the competition pretty much anything. You know, could have called it man and nature, and they're just still right. great up there. So, um, <laughs> but without further ado, should I have a look at some pictures? Absolutely, let's look okay, at it. The first one I'm going to show you. This is my iPad here. So I've got all the shots on here, so uh, I apologize if I look down. But the, the first one I'm going to discuss is um, a picture by Melinda, Melinda Holden Waters, um, of a child looking out of a window. Now. This picture reminded me of a picture I took back in 1986, and it's it just speaks film to me. It's like is it shot on film on a 200 mil lens? Um, but what, what's important is it's the framing. I love the framing. This is one of those pictures that um, just uh, I don't know. It's just a, a, a frame within a frame. The slight tilt of the child's head, the the clarity of eyes, the gaze, uh, the little hands, and everything just works with me. Is it simplicity? No, not really. It's actually quite complex. But um, it was something I wanted to discuss. And, and there's a little white spots on the on the, the, the picture there, which sort of tell me it's a, a print. Um, and it's probably you know, HP5 or something. And it may well be a vintage print, but, but it's certainly a beautiful picture. And it's the one that, uh, that, that Melinda should be very proud of having taken. So is, um, is that a certain place? Is that... No, it's not. This is just one I wanted to mention. This is why I would, I would give this a highly commended if I'm a judge. Okay. I'm, I'm being a judge today. Good. So highly commended. Well done, Melinda. It's a fantastic picture, and I'm hopefully, Fabulous. if it's one of your uh, relatives, uh, maybe it's uh, your child or, or, or um, then this is a picture you're going to absolutely treasure for life. Fabulous. Um, moving on, um, the second picture which I want to discuss is this picture by Jack Jack Muller. Um, it's far simpler than the first portrait we looked at. Uh -huh. And uh, it's an interesting picture, actually. It's got, um, again, there's an arresting eye contact. And I just love eye contact uh, right. in, in a picture like this. Um, the placement of uh, the child, the little girl, in the frame in, it is just beautiful, too. It's got a really, really off-center, but classical framing. Um, right. Beautiful bokey, shallow depth of field. But it's one of those pictures, it's not a competition winner. But it's one of those shots that has got such a high commercial value. I mean, the parent of that child would be in tears if they were in my viewing room now looking at that picture on the screen behind me. Um, <laughs> because it's just, you can see into that child's soul. So again, you know, I just wanted to say well done, Jack, because that's a, a beautiful portrait and I wish I'd put my name to that. Highly commendable Jack, got it. Highly commendable, that's highly commendable Jack. Highly commendable. And one other highly commendable uh, picture, okay. which in fact, probably the most, the strongest of the portraits is this one here. Okay, it's by Bo uh, it's by Bobby Sue Baker. Right, okay? right, um, beautiful And form. it's the most beautiful portrait. Why is that? Now, why is that? It's a good question. Well, first of all, um, before I come on, to the subject. I want to just look at the background. What we've actually got here, we've got delicate blue hues blending into yellows. Um, and we've just got, everything is in a very calm contrast state. The colors and the, the palette, the color palette is so delicate 
it makes it just gorgeous. The mm -hmm. contrast is low, um, and all these things add up to a very good background. Now, the placement of the, uh, of the, the young woman in the frame is very, very similar to Jack's picture, right. um, slightly offset to the left. But what really matters here is the camera angle is above the eye line, and it's looking down at the girl. So it gives her, or the lady, it gives her a vulnerability. But she has got such strength. She's got strength in her soul. It just comes straight through those eyes. It's a very questioning look. It's a very intense look. It's a very equal to the photographer look, even though the photographer's looking down on, on, on this girl. And I just felt that because of that intensity, because of that scene into her soul, it just was a very special picture. And it's one that I would love to have a print of. Damien, this is your calling, man. You are good at this. This is seriously okay. so great. So, Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, so Bobby, I'm you know you know super highly commended, but um, I'm judging a competition here called Simplicity. Right. Okay. If I was judging a portrait competition, this is would be right up there. You know, possibly the, the the first place of of, of the whole set. Fantastic. Um, so I'm going to move on. Okay. Now the next picture, which I'm going to show you, is one which is um, quite dramatic. Yes. Um, and at first of all, I didn't know what was going on, uh, and I think he was this. Um, but it looks to be like a lake um, in a sort of slightly foggy day. And it's got three ducks. Now, we all know that three is a great sort of compositional um, element to, to, to have in your picture. Right. And they're quite essentially placed, and the horizon runs right through the middle of the picture. There's a lot of things that actually are wrong with this picture. But you know what? I love it. This is something I could see <laughs> on the wall of a cafe, or uh, on my, uh, probably not in my home, but certainly uh, um, I could see this as a large canvas, and it would just, I'd love to have it. I think blue is a very calming color, right. and I think as an interior design element, this would be great. So if, you, if I was an interior designer looking to create a mood in a certain type of room, um, then this would be one picture which I, I, I would choose. So yes. um, it's by uh, Jan, um, yeah. and you know, it, Jan, you've got third place, so well done. Well done, Jan, awesome. Uh, Okay, moving on, we've okay. now got eggs. Now, this is very difficult for you to see this because um, we've got uh, three eggs here placed on a white background, a white scoop, lit with one light um, and maybe a reflector board or card. Right. Um, it's a really, really simple picture. Again, it's got the, the trio, the three elements, which are the th three subjects, which, you know, the classical position, um, nicely placed in the frame. Um, what can I say about it? It's got all the tones are in above mid gray, so everything is all about the subtle shades of gray. You've got white eggs on a white background, and yet it's all depicted as, as tones of gray and, and beautifully done. I mean, the, the, the technical elements in this picture are just superb. It's very, the, very interesting that they made eggs into an art piece. I would put that. I would yeah, put that absolutely. picture in my kitchen. Yeah, I, in effect, um, you know, I, I think eggs are very beautiful, um, and and. I, one thing I would say, though, is that with this picture here, the, the egg at the back, I'd like to see that rotated slightly so I can still see the huh. fact that it's egg-shaped and not a ball. I mean, okay. it's picky, I know, but <laughs> you know, when you're setting up a picture like this, but it's that's all good. about getting everything right. You've got right. total control, and so you need to exercise that control. Um, and so uh, the, the tones, the printing, the skill, everything in that picture is superb, really, really well done. Um, this could easily sit on a French cafe wall. Um, Absolutely. It's, just got a, it's a very minimalist picture for a minimalist space. And, uh, you know, Thomas, well done. This is Thomas Clements, this, this picture. Well and done, Thomas. And second place. So well done, Thomas. Second place. I, second I think... Place. I and think it's, it's fantastic that you are also giving constructive criticism, and I think that that's how the viewers should take it, is they, you know, they got here because they have a fantastic photo, but it's always good to hear critique. So thank you. Thank you for saying this. Great. Okay. I hope it's all right. I hope I'm not putting anyone off. Because oh, no. I think no. that it's second place means that out of the, the, the hundreds, perhaps, of, of entries that you've got, you know, right. this is right up there. And I think simplicity, it works really, really well with simplicity too. I mean, there's really nothing else in the frame. It just fits that subject. And it could have been shot for the competition, which is sometimes what I like to see. Right. Okay. Fabulous. The winner, the winner is this picture. Winner. Okay. Winner, oh, winner, winner, winner. Emily Rose. Well done, Emily. Okay. Yeah. It has a title. Simplicity is Distant Storms, A Bird and a Little Girl. Now, okay. 
there's a lot that's not right with this picture. Let me start by saying <laughs> that, okay? But he is the winner. So well done, okay? So you can relax. Okay? <laughs> but that's saying that it's not right about it. I, uh, you know, it's a beautiful picture. The reason it's the winner, let me start with all the positives. The reason Good. this picture is the winner is because it's something I can't put down. When I look at this picture, it's there. Um, I'm drawn in. I'm thinking, what is that girl thinking? What has she seen? Is it a picture that was taken 15 years ago? Is she now a, a, a woman? Um, what's, is she imagining her adulthood there? Or is it, I, I, I'm feeling like it should be the cover of a novel, you know? Wow. Um, something that just, it's a, it, I could write a novel about this book. You know, this book, this, uh, this picture, this picture has got something, has got depth. It's got the a story to bird, it. Okay. okay, it could be from another neg, it probably isn't. Um, I like to think the fact that it, I like to think it isn't, but I don't really care. I think that solitude, that bird and the girl and, and the sea is just really lovely composition. Um, I like the way the horizon is placed. I like the sky. I like the whole feel of it. It's a threatening sky, a very dark, blue, cold scene, but the child looks completely calm. Okay? Wow. One thing that's okay, perhaps not right about it, and it's something that certainly um, other people I've spoken to about this picture because I wanted to share this picture with other people. Sure. Um, they said that the child's arm position makes her look like she's got a backpack on or something, I don't know. But to, to <laughs> me, I didn't see that. So it's not my problem, you know? Um, right. And it's not quite in focus where it needs to be. And they, they, I don't know. There's just a few little issues with it. But but I it grabbed you emotionally. It grabbed you. It. It's it's the it's the only picture of the set that I could write an essay about. I could I could it, it, you could write a poem about this book and uh, this book this picture or a book even and and it's got some depth to it and, and I think that's really important. It right. leaves some imagination to the viewer and I mm. think the, the person looking at that picture can get drawn in and and well done. You know I think Emily you did great. In simplicity and you've bowled me over with your fantastic image. Wonderful, wonderful. Emily, congratulations. We're going to send you a one-year subscription to Lori Nordstrom's Photo Talk Forum. We're also going to send you a signed t-shirt from Brendan Ryan, his 100% cotton, and uh, it is yours. Congratulations. So, Damien, excellent feedback. My gracious, if Simon Cowell was nice, you would be the Simon Cowell of photography judging. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So let's talk about this week. What do you want viewers, photographers, amateur, beginner, pro photogs, what do you want to see out of them this week for this week's category? Okay, I think um, I'm going to throw that category in there. I mentioned it earlier for some reason, man and nature. I want to see pictures that harmonize man and nature. It could be our effect on the environment, so you could have a, um, an oil refinery in the sunset. It could be a flower in a flower pot, um, where the flower, the flower pot and the flower are working in harmony together to produce one, uh, one whole, which en encompasses man and nature. So I think it's quite a broad spectrum. Um, but I think both elements should be contained in the image, and I Love think it. the image, um, I just be free with it. Just just take it out there and, 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 and run with it and see what comes up. I've already got some great ideas for it, and you know, who, who knows, I might get a chance to go out this week and shoot for it and, and, and submit something myself. Love it. Just so people understand, man in nature, that encompasses human beings, not just a man. Yes, <laughs> so, you know, mankind, uh, mankind and nature being, so it could be, uh, you know, Human in nature. Should we do that? Yes, just so, it could okay. be a, a, a tornado um, and a house being with its roof coming off, or it could be um, a um, someone swimming in a, a brook in, in the countryside. I love it. I love it. There it is. Frame your best shot. Humankind and nature. There it is. That's it. And tell us really fast. Got a couple more minutes here. Okay. What are people going to be winning this week? Okay, this week they're going to win um, a download for, of my latest DVD. I say it's a download because my DVD is in PAL, which is a European system, and also I have it in Blu-ray, but um, I've got it as available as a full HD download online. Now, it's, uh, it's a Speedlight Mastery DVD, and it uh, uh, covers how to use your Speedlights creatively. It's very strobist. Um, 
and it covers using one speed light through up to using four or five speed lights together, using the uh, Pocket Wizard system or the uh, camera's infrared system. So for Canon and Nikon users, it's equally suitable, and uh, it's a really, really strong uh, body of work, uh, and you can refer to it lots of times. So uh, it's a great thing having a DVD or a, a video production. Um, and as you, as a download, you'll be able to have the the, the, the files on your computer, or you, you can transfer them to your iPad or your iPhone mm -hmm. or your your uh, BlackBerry or other device, uh, and you can have, take them out with you. And you can uh, in the field, you can just refer to the settings that I've used or use them to get some inspiration and, and, and practice. So this wow. week you're going to be uh, available, ready to download. Um, uh, Speed Like Mastery DVD is two and a half hours of content, and uh, hopefully it will leave you inspired to go out there and sh get your flash gun out. And, and <laughs> I love it. Damien, thank you for, for allowing us to utilize the giveaway, and you're very gracious to give that to our viewers. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You have been Melissa, an absolute pleasure. I look forward to actually meeting you in person one day. Yeah, we'll, we'll, when I come over, we'll meet up and we'll have a, we'll have a beer or two. Let's do it. Only okay. if you teach me how to teach uh, to talk in a really cool accent. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Damien. Next thank week, you. join Bye. us next week as we have another fantastic artist with us. Good luck, guys.